So Bayern Munich just had this match versus Wolfsburg. I'll be talking about the tactics. I'll do some picture analysis of some of Bayern Munich's plays, some things I noticed in this match. And I wasn't very happy with this match, but let's get right into Bayern's tactics. So it was this 4-2-3-1 formation where you have the back four, Davies, the Lake Pavard, Cancelo, Kimmich and Gretzka in midfield. Of course, we had some players out, Open Meccano, Chupa Moting were out, which meant Muller was lining up as the sole striker. And to be honest, it still doesn't really work. Bayern aren't creating that many chances from him. Often there were long balls from Pavard, from the Ligt, going on to Muller, who would be running around and trying to claim them. But because he wasn't given another physical striker like Chupa Moting to play off of, he was unable to sometimes control some of these balls. We lost the balls in these instances. And we also weren't able to create that much in attack because there was no focal point to aim for. Muller was roaming around, but it meant we didn't create many chances. Yes, I know we scored four goals, but it wasn't a great offensive display. It required a wonderful goal from Musiala where he was dribbling the whole team. It required a great finish from Coman. I think we had four shots and four goals, which really shows it wasn't the amazing offensive performance that four goals makes it out to be. And also, you see here, because Muller is the striker, firstly, he has less space as there's no one to play off of as a Chupa, because say Chupa moting was Musiala in this instant, for example, um, then Muller would be in behind, but it could mean Muller could go often to the right, could go to the left, could interplay with the midfielders. But when Muller is up front, when he goes to the right, there's simply no one up front. So it creates no attacking chances. The center backs are free and Bayern is not able to play properly, but also Muller is not able to play his proper game then where he's roaming all around. And he simply, it simply is not a solution for him to play out striker. So I would have liked to see maybe Gnabry up front or some other combination instead of just Muller up front and stranded, which affects our offensive, affects the creativity game also because Muller is our main creator. And when he's um, played up front, he's not that involved on the ball. It means we didn't create many chances and we didn't create many chances this game. Another thing to talk about is Pavard at centre-back. So Pavard always goes on and on about how he wants to be playing in centre-back. But there were a few times when Pavard, and I'll talk more about this in the pitches, when Pavard, say, um, there was a play in the midfield for the other team, Pavard would go forward and this leaves a big gap in this area for which the defence couldn't compensate for and that actually uh, play the part in some of the goals. And also Cancelo, Cancelo often moved far forward here, which leaves that gap in that half space in behind him due to his offensive qualities, although Cancelo was good. One other thing to mention though, is Davies has been shocking in all the games he's played this season. And yeah, again, it's his touch is so bad. His touch might start here, but then it goes over there. Like he's he's been really poor this season. And also Gretzka, he wasn't offering that much midfield protection, but let's get into um, these pitcher analysis because there's a lot to talk about in um, in these cases. So in terms of um, this, you see that here Wolfsburg had a higher XG than Bayern. They had 2.51 to 0 0.56. And that was what my point was. Bayern didn't create many chances. Bayern were not good going forward. They were lucky going forward against PSG. If we have this again, then we'll be smashed by the quality of PSG, but also we probably won't be able to finish then. So very worrying signs that we lost the game so heavily on XG as suggested, um, as suggested here. Then in this image, um, you see here the four man strike line of Bayern. So this is actually Cancelo, I think. But you see there's a clear four, four attackers, and that's what Bayern was often doing. So it was usually the wingers, and then Muller and Musiala would often come up as a two-man strike force, or sometimes Gretzko would partner Musiala or Muller, for example, in that strike force. But it was a clear four-man, and especially when we were on the break, there were four men going forward. So that was the clear Nagelsmann strategy. Um, but, oops. So, but let's talk about Pavard now. So this is what I was talking about. Some This was the first goal, but Pavard's supposed to be here. 
Pavard has been dragged into midfield and he's going on a rampaging run um, trying to pressure. And that's fine if you're right back, but if you're centre back, you're leaving this gaping hole here. And therefore, because Pavard is dragged out of position, there is that hole here. So some nice tidy dribbling from the Wolfsburg players gets into that space. And then you see even Davies here has had to come inside, which leaves lots of space out here for the Wolfsburg winger. But it means Davies can't fully compensate, which means the late can't fully go into this space as Davies still needs to uh, monitor this winger. But that has meant that essentially um, there is that gaping space and that's how Wolfsburg scored their goal. So you see here, this is just right after that attack. Wolfsburg got into that space and then again Pavard goes for the pressure but it leaves a gap in behind for the Wolfsburg attacker. So Pavard, he's going for these pressures. He's leaving gaps in behind. De Ligt can't cover for it. Davies can't cover to that man because he has to cover this winger. And so it just simply didn't work. Pavard at centre-back was simply a liability. And we really need Upamecano back versus PSG. And this attack also showed because, um, because there was the slight implications that Cancelo does push far forward, which meant that Cancelo also wasn't really tracking this run because he was pushing forward and he wasn't far back enough. So uh, we'll need to watch out for that versus PSG for sure. Another moment where I spotted Pavard do the exact same thing is you see Pavard is here. He's supposed to be a member of the back line, but he's not in this case because this is because he's pushed forward yet again from the centre back position. And that has left this open marker, which the um, Wolfsburg player delivers across and the, the player really should have scored this chance. It would have made it 3-2, it would have made it really interesting. And this is the point of this game. It was 4-2, so the four goals were undeserved from Bayern, but also Wolfsburg could have scored more goals. It was a poor defensive performance. Davies shocking, Pavard really bad. The Lake not that good, Kinsella not that good defensively. Offensively, he was good, but defensively, he was a bit of a liability. And I worry about that. Against a better team, they will punish us for that. There were so many gaps in um in Bayern. See, in, in this clip, you see a gap here, but there's also a gap far post. There's also a gap with this player here. The defense wasn't organized. It wasn't cohesive. And we really struggled as a result of it. And I think a part of that also came um, down to not just Pavard, but even the other defenders like Stanis's. You see here, this should not be a problem. There's every Bayern player is marking a man but yet riddle back to one of the smallest players up against stanisic finds a pocket of space for this ball in behind and stanisic doesn't cover it see these barn players weren't dealing with the crosses effectively and it really hampered Bayern's defensive cohesiveness Bayern's defensive control in this game really poor from Bayern munich defenders because stanisic really needs to deal with this type of ball but he, he, he just didn't. Wolfsburg players peeled off their men. The defense will need to be much more astute in our next games. And one last thing to talk about defensively is the midfield not tracking runners. So in this chance here, um, the ball comes into this player who plays a uh, first time pass to an onrushing midfielder from, um, from Wolfsburg. But Either Musiala, I think this is Musiala at least, either Gretzka, one of the midfielders need to be tracking that third man run. So Gretzka has a clear sight of this run here and he needs to go track it. But because Gretzka or the midfielders weren't tracking these third man runs, it meant that Wolfsburg could easily play combinations and they could easily get in behind. Simply put, Bayern's defense, Bayern's midfield, is not defensively equipped. This is the type of run that Sabitzer tracked, but Goretzka is not tracking in this case. Maybe Kimmich would have tracked it. Of course, Kimmich was sent off. And one thing to know is that because Kimmich was sent off, it was smart for Nalesman to bring on Matthias Tell in that striker position. Because you see here, maybe eight, nine, ten Wolfsburg players all in front of Tell, and Tell is a man with speed. So say a Bayern defender got the ball here, they could quickly play Tell and Tell could be on the break with his speed. So that made sense. But overall, it wasn't a great performance from Nagelsmann. I thought the tactics 
were poor. I thought it's bad to have Muller up front, even if Chupa Moting is injured and can't play. Partner Gnabry with Muller, get Muller someone to play off of. Also, the midfield of Kimmich Gretzka just doesn't really work anymore. They're not tracking those runners. It's not defensively solid. But Gretzka also, it's not like great in possession. The defense was shocking. So even though we had that big win against Mainz with the new tag dig, this is a very worrying performance. Defense is playing bad. Bayern are playing bad. So in four of the five games Bayern have played this year, Bayern have been poor. 4-2 is a misleading scoreline. It was deceiving. We weren't as good at that Nagelsmann has some real questions to answer otherwise we're going to be in big trouble versus PSG but thank you for watching and goodbye